everyone, and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I try to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. Um, we're going to do red blends from Washington State, and these are big guns. These are big, bad boys. These are ones that cost, you know, they're all above 20 bucks. Uh, they're well known in Washington State, and I don't know why. I just thought it would be a cool time to do these. Uh, they've been around uh, waiting on the dock, waiting to be reviewed. Now I'm going to do it. I uh, just wanted to quickly say that uh, if the Seahawks don't win pretty soon, they've got to win against San Francisco. They have to. The season is starting to slip away. Haven't given up yet. I have not given up yet. But, you know, um, they need a new offense coordinator or someone. Or they need Pete Carroll to step in and tell them what to do. Because I, I think the play calling just sucks. So let's get started. Avancino Grand Reserve Red Blend 2013 Columbia Valley. This is from uh, bottled by Van Lor Loben Sells Cellars. That's a mouthful. 25 bucks. Let's see what we get. And, and what I liked about all of these wines, this is another reason I picked them, is all three of these wineries, all three of the wineries, decided to put the grape composition the blend on the back. I love it. All wineries take note. The consumer at least likes to know what's in there. They, percentages, I know some guys like percentages, I just want to know what's in the wine. And most of us know the first one listed is the most and down from there. But this one is 75% Cabernet Sauvignon and 25% Sangiovese. Very interesting blend. And this is a two, 2013 and it's turning out, at least in my experience, that although 2012 was touted as a great vintage, very warm. 2013, a little bit more balance. I find the wines, I just like the wines a little bit better from 13. I found a lot of good ones. Only one exception so far, and one out of all of the wines that I try is not bad. So I know all of you that are watching, you know, you start getting above 25 into the 30 $40 range. This is where spending your wine dollars wisely is very important because you don't want to, you know, cough up that much money and have it not be worth it. And so, you know, I'm glad to be able to help you and review these wines. Let's see what we get on the nose. Ooh, sorry, cork. Can't help you with that one. You're going to have to go for a new glass. That is definitely a cork wine. Now, cork is that kind of wet cardboard smell, a little bit moldy. Um, I'm very sensitive to it. This one was, um, well, I think it's fairly obvious. Some people, believe it or not, if it's slightly tainted, will not pick up on it. Hmm. It's close. It's funny, right off the bat, I thought, eh. Could be the composition of the cabin of San Gio. It is slightly corked, and I really don't want to re review one that's slightly corked. I'll set it off to the side. I'm not sure. I mean, it, it's slightly corked. <laughs> yeah, might not be. Let's let's review it. I'll use a different glass for the other two. Um, I'm getting a lot of cinnamon. The reason I don't know, maybe the initial hit off the uh, nose. Uh, and I did want to talk a little bit about decanting. These are big bad boys. I was going to throw them in a decanter, but I know most of you, and it's true, uh, will not decant these wines. You'll pop them and you'll pour them. I know, trust me, I know some of you out there are very dedicated decanters. That's a good thing. Um, I like to review the wines the way I know people, most people will taste them. These would definitely benefit from decanting. So it's slightly, I mean, 
Let's just say it's, yeah, I can't do it. I, I'm getting the cork on the back. I'm sorry. I thought maybe I could get through it, but I don't think it's fair to the producer to review their wine if it's slightly corked. We'll address that one another time. Let's move on. Got to get rid of the glass because that kind of wet cardboard thing just kind of sticks around and it will bother me. But like I said, not everybody's that sensitive. I think some of you might drink that and actually uh, not know it was cork. And you might not think might not think the wine is all that great. You see, so you got to be careful uh, with that one. If if you ever um, if you're ever in a class or you're around somebody and they say the wine's cork, take the time to smell it and see what they're talking about. I think it's very important to understand what that is because I know there's a few people that have had wines and they come to me and they said, you know, this wine wasn't really that good. I mean, it was okay. And I smelled the bottle. I said, well, it was cork. They go, really? I go, yeah, it was cork. You know, it happens Happens to a few wines. So right off the bat, I'm, oh, <laughs> just got, this is a Sophia Cellars 2012 Big Sky Cuvée Columbia Valley Red, 14.7 um, alcohol, if that means anything to you guys. Again, it, it, right on the back is a composition Merlot 51%, Cabernet Sauvignon, um, 30%, Cab Franc, 9%, Malbec, 7%, and Petit Verdot, 3%. Uh, so it's basically, yeah, basically a um, Bordeaux-style blend from Savaya Cellars. Give you a little close-up. Oh, there we go. Is that it? It's got the little fish on it, yeah. All right, let's see what we get on the nose. This is a thirty-seven dollars. That that cork thing threw me off. I'm sorry. I'll get back on. Get, I'll get back on speed with that one. That just kind of threw me for a loop for a minute. I didn't expect that. It happened. Doesn't happen as much as it used to. Cork is getting a lot better. Excuse me, just one second. Turn on the microphone. My 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 uh, recorder turned picks up volume a lot better, but since I got this uh, shotgun mic, I think it's helped a little bit. I've been watching a couple of the videos, and I, you know, I notice that the sound quality is a little bit better, so I want to make sure that is on when I do these. Lots of chocolate, lots of currants coming through, big time. Get a little bit of a touch of a bark note, which is kind of interesting. Some interesting spices. But this is like deep, dark, rich fruit with chocolate kind of thrown in there. A little bit of a wilted rose petal, if, you know, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, you know, you smell wilted rose petal. You know, when the rose starts, pat, you know, starts getting a little bit wilted, has a little bit of a different aroma to it. That's where I'm getting, that's what I'm getting on this one. All right, let's see what we get on the palette. 37 bucks. Good structure, good acid. I'm, this is kick ass. I mean, I did not, I was expecting that 14.7. Now, trust me, I do not let that prejudice my mind, but I am. I guess I am, sort of. I mean, I, I'm thinking, wow, it's 14.7, let's see what we get. But by the same token, I'm not going to not try it because it's that high alcohol. This has got great balance, good acidity, good structure. Wow. It's like liquefied red flowers in my mouth. I get a little bit of cherry, red cherries, currants coming through. Good acid, a little bit of spice. I get a little bit of white pepper like hanging up on my lips and gums. This is a baby. I'm serious. This, this is not ready to drink yet. It is. It needs another two to three years in the bottle to kind of flesh out a little bit. I'm impressed. I mean, yeah, I just have to say I'm impressed. I did not expect that.
this baby needs food. If you're going to drink this now, which you can, you're going to drink it now, make sure you have some food. Make sure you have a big plate of lasagna, some spaghetti, some steak, something with a little bit of grease and, you know, something that will cut through that acid. This is a beauty. This is a beauty. If you want a grape, and it's interesting that the chocolate, because on the nose I get all this chocolate, but on the palate, not so much. Right on the end, just barely, that chocolate kind of sneaks in just a little bit. But it'll even more so as this thing fleshes out and starts to age. Yeah, two to three years is going to be a beauty. I'm impressed. 37 bucks, store it away, get yourself a couple bottles, put them away, see how they uh, start aging. Because this is, a, I'm, I'm telling you right now, 5, 10, 15, 15 years, this will just improve and improve. I'm going to go A minus um, only because that, you know, that little bit of, you know, this is an A minus wine, could be an A plus wine in five years. Let's leave it at that. Let's move on. 2012. Now we talked about the 13 vintage. That's a good example of the structure, the style that they're able to get out of the 13 vintage. Nice job, by the way, Sabaya. Um, <laughs> Sentinel, Northridge Vineyard, 2012, red wine, while Luke Slope. This is Milbrandt's. Did I say that, Milbrandt? This rolls in at $50. Uh, again, this gives a uh, composition. 70% Cab, 23% Merlot, 5% Malbec, 2% Petit Verdot. So there you go. Another Bordeaux-style blend. So this is a little hotter. Uh, vintage 2012. A lot of people liked it. You know, I mean, a lot of consumers like those big, plush wines. They don't want to wait for their $37 bottle of uh, Savaya Cuvée to age so they can get it where they want to get it. Uh, but there's a lot of you out there that do. I do appreciate that. Um, uh, you're not the majority, but you're definitely a big part of the wine community. You like to buy wines, lay them down, see how they work. I have customers that come in and ask that very question. Give me a couple wines that I need to lay down. They're still around. Those folks are still there. All right. Let's see what we get on the nose. Again, lots of chocolate. This has more in the tobacco category kind of thing going on. A little bit of a meat marinade, sort of barbecue spicing. A lot of currants, and I get like this sweet, uh, um, sweet tart sort of. Um, there's a candy s sort of thing. It reminds me maybe a little bit of licorice, like um, red vine, or not red vine, but. Black vine licorice. All right, let's see what we get on the palette. Very, very spicy. I mean, it Feels like somebody just dumped some white pepper and black pepper in my mouth. Good structure. I mean, this is a monster. Again, two beautiful wines that are not ready to drink yet. Honest to goodness, they are not ready yet. Uh, this one's a little bit more open knit, a little bit more ready to drink than the Big Sky Cuvée. Um, it's definitely got some chocolate tones, current tones, but very grippy on the back end. You can, the, the tannins are very, very, they're there. They're not too astringent. This one needs food also. Good acidity. I get a little interesting, like, green thing going on on the back side of this one. But very grippy on the palate, if you know what I mean. Now there's a lot of people that will, you know, I have people, I don't like wine that makes me pucker. Well, this would do it. These are definitely got some wood tannins and some fruit tannins to them, big time. And, but like I said, a little more approachable than the Savaya right now, but I'm still saying five, 10, 15 years. This will just get better 
and better. $37, $50, a little bit of a difference. This is a little richer, darker fruit flavors. The Savaya, uh, a little brighter acidity. Uh, still, the, the Milbrat has the acidity. It's, more, it's a little better integrated, I think, than the Savaya. Not a huge amount, but it is, it's noticeable on my palate. Both of them will age about the same amount of time. Even getting a little blueberry on that one. The tobacco coming through. I'm going to go A on that one again. Right now that's an A wine. That's an A minus wine. I think both of them will probably be another 10 years from now will be A plus wines. So if you're a younger generation person watching this episode, I know you're out there. Um, I know some of you that watch this and you want to invest in a couple of wines that could age out really nicely, maybe for an anniversary, maybe for your child was born, you want to, in 2012, 2013, you want to put one away for when they graduate 13 years later. Both of these, both of these wines would be perfect. I did that for all my kids um, and we opened them when they graduated. It was kind of fun. Uh, cool thing to do if you ever thought about that and I did pay a little bit more for those wines sometimes you have to if you want them to age you know a lot of it has to do with how much they put in the wine quality of fruit the amount of oak all that good stuff you keep watching and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely